This is a short lecture on takeaways about economic growth. And it's related to MANQ chapters eight and nine. I do think if you just read the chapters, it's easy to lose sight of the forest for the trees. So I'm, I'm gonna try to describe the overall picture here. Let me take as my starting point uh, what I'll call the O-ring theory of economic development at two different levels. So to explain the metaphor, I need to give you a little history. In January 28, 1986, Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight. The cause of the disaster was later determined to be failure of O-rings, one of many, many parts on the shuttle. So O-ring has become a metaphor for how one thing going wrong can ruin something big and complex. It's, it's easy to ruin things. It's uh, tougher to have them all turn out well if they're big and complex. So Michael Kramer, who's, who's a very good economist uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, applies this O-ring theory to complex products, saying that being able to make complex products that aren't ruined requires doing a lot of things right. And, and so, in particular, countries that can do a lot of things right are likely to make more complex products. But I'm gonna use this metaphor of the O-ring uh, for a more general point, that it takes a lot of things going, going right to be a rich country. Many things can go wrong that, that can keep a country poor. But uh, I have to say, though, that it's a lot easier to continue doing many things right than to start doing a lot of things right in the first place. Generally speaking, rich countries can stay rich. And, and the analogy here is, if you think of, suppose you were trying to learn some gymnastics, and if you, if you finally uh, you know, got, your, you know, got your move right, and let's say you do your, your, uh, you're doing skating and you do a double, uh, double axle, once you've done it once, you kind of start to have a feel for it and uh, you have some muscle memory and it's easier to do it right again. So once, once you've done a lot of things right uh, as, a, as a country, it's, it's a little easier to continue to doing them right. But doing a lot of things right in the first place is really quite difficult. Okay, so now uh, economic growth or a poor country becoming rich then becomes a matter of of doing a lot of things right and let's let's look at the list of things you have to do right by talking about uh the ways that things can go wrong that'll keep you poor and that you need to overcome first category is security and property rights uh, there are some very basic facts people afraid of being killed raped or enslaved may put a lot a lot of effort into avoiding these fates that take time and energy away from production. If people are worried about their personal safety, that's gonna be where most of their energy and most of their attention goes. And uh, you know, producing stuff that, that, producing lots of stuff and becoming rich is gonna be uh, on, the, on, on the back burner. Uh, now, even if they're not afraid of being killed, raped, or enslaved, People afraid that the ruler will confiscate output may not put full effort into production. And, you know, we do have income taxes and social security taxes and other kinds of taxes, but this is nothing compared to the degree to which people some in, in other countries in the past have sometimes had to worry about uh, the ruler taking all their crops at harvest time and so on, and that, that's gotta be discouraging and, and sometimes make people work less hard. Uh, now, this is somewhat similar, but uh, 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 also a big deal. People afraid the ruler will confiscate capital may not build much capital. Uh, if, you build, if you build a nice factory, that factory is a sitting duck for the ruler confiscating it, uh, if, if, unless there are you know, it's, it's actually difficult to make uh, systems that stop that from happening, as I'll talk about in a minute. And that's true for, for wealth in general, not just for a factory or specific equipment, but even 
even if your wealth is in the form of gold or or pieces of paper like like um, stocks and bonds, you still have to worry about the ruler confiscating it. So this is actually a very tough problem to solve. Uh, it's a quite difficult political design problem to get a government strong enough to keep people from physically threatening, stealing from, or lying to each other without that government being strong enough uh, to, to itself threaten, steal from, and lie to the people. Um, so that, that's a very difficult problem. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have you read a supplementary reading on, uh, has, it has mob in the title that, that talks about this. The second category of things that can go wrong, keeping a country poor, are having too low a willingness to save. Even if there's not a big danger of government confiscation of wealth or capital, people may not be patient enough and far-sighted enough to save enough to provide enough loanable funds that can be used for investment. And, and this, this can be a genuine uh, cultural difference over time. It, it may be something um, there there's an interesting uh, there, there's uh, an interesting claim that uh, maybe this the, the sort of pro saving attitudes evolved over time in England for example and and the culture changed as uh, and some of this was passed down through families and as uh, people from the idea is that as um, as as people from well-off families had to go had downward mobility that the you know the daughters and the second sons and the third sons and so on you you had more and more people who had this this cultural background of being uh, being pro saving and uh, you know, pro good behavior in many ways, and and that sort of thing, that sort of thing can matter. Okay, so at any rate, uh, saving attitudes can matter. However, for any given level of patience and farsightedness on the part of households, government policy, even aside from what they're doing with capital taxation, can have a big effect on national saving. First of all, government budget surpluses are a direct addition to national saving. Second, governments can directly in, invest. A good example is infrastructure, building roads, bridges, and, and so on. Uh, third, many governments effectively force households to save a certain amount. Uh, the US government hasn't done that, but uh, other places have. I, I, think, uh, I think Singapore has done some of that. Uh, but, but even under the US system, gov governments can get people to save more by setting high default saving rates for retirement savings plans. So it's kind of interesting, you know, that there is a tax break that gets people into retirement savings plans to begin with, but then once people are in retirement savings plans, the uh, just what you set to happen automatically if people don't, don't overturn it can have a big effect on what people actually do. So if you just say, oh, if you do nothing, you're gonna save a lot, most people will leave that be. So the governments can have pretty big effects on saving rates, which give a pool of funds that can be used for building factories and buying equipment and, and so on. Third category, uh, general transferable human capital. Um, now, this is about the quality of labor. That's one way of looking at it. And low quality labor is like less labor. In addition, however, low quality workers, the least with it workers, might be the weakest link and ruin a lot. So there's an interesting book on this called Hive Mind, How Your Nation's IQ Matters So Much More Than Your Own. So, so it's not like, it, it, you know, if you have one good worker and one bad worker, uh, you still might get a bad result if the bad worker ruins things. So it, it might be that you need to get your weakest link on up to a certain level. And if in general, people are well educated in your country and, and otherwise well behaved, that may help quite a bit with productivity. Okay, now, what makes a worker a low quality worker? One simple way to be a low quality worker is to have little education and little training. 
Uh, however, there are other ways to be a low quality worker. In addition to low levels of academic education or low levels of direct training for, for production, a worker can be a low quality worker because of a bad attitude. So there's a very interesting video on this. This is a TED talk about givers and takers by Adam Grant. And this is a short, as, as all TED talks, this is a short talk. I highly recommend that you, that you, you go look at this video uh, right after this. I'm also in the middle of reading a very interesting book called Positive Intelligence, which is talking about kind of positive and negative attitudes in workers and whether they have a lot of internal saboteurs who are not only sabotaging their own direct productivity, but that are causing them to drag down their fellow workers. So there are a lot of interesting dimensions here and, uh, you know, many things many things that go beyond just the amount, the number of years of education, which is the dimension of transferable human capital that the book talks about. Now, why have I talked about general transferable human capital? It's because there's some kind of human capital that's specific to a particular type of job, to a particular uh, factory, a particular type of thing. And that's part of having a clue. But uh, having a clue here, oh, sorry, this is category four, I mislabeled it. But um, the, uh, this also includes technology. Uh, so it's not super easy to get better technologies. Uh, among a list of new ideas one could try, uh, I, you know, first of all, it's not easy to come up with them in the first place, but once you have a list of ideas, it's a big job to sort through them all to find out which actually work. Some examples, many seemingly promising drugs fail when they're tested. Um, something that might not seem like a, you know, a technology is, is a business model, but a business model can be seen as a technology. That most new businesses fail suggests that it's difficult to guess in advance which business models will work and which won't. And it can be very specific to the circumstances. Yeah, you know, a, a um, um, you know, a, a Persian restaurant in one location might work great. A Persian restaurant in another location might work terribly. Okay, so so anyway, trying to find good ideas, technologies that work can be hard. Uh, but but then uh, you you need more than just the general idea. Some of the most important human capital is specific knowledge of how to do a particular job. And much of this knowledge is tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is knowledge gained from experience that's difficult to teach explicitly in advance of someone beginning to do the job and making mistakes. I mean, most of us had had the experience of trying to explain something to someone and they still still try to do it and then they, they fail and they make lots of mistakes. It's, uh, it's not so easy to transmit knowledge of how to do something just by an explicit set of instructions. Because of a combination of low quality workers and a need for tacit knowledge, it can be difficult to copy techniques that work well elsewhere. So part of what's important about this slide is that there are two ways to get a better technology. One is to invent it. That's the top bullet point. The other is to copy it. But, but copying isn't always a slam dunk easy thing. It, it, you know, because there's this tacit knowledge and uh, you know, it can be hard to take a technique that works with high quality workers and get it to work with low quality workers. Okay, now that's, so I've given you a list of things that can go wrong. This list of things that can go wrong maps to a list of parts of the production function. First of all, security and property rights plus willingness to save affect the amounts of the inputs of labor and capital. Secondly, general transferable human capital affects the details of how labor comes into the production function. All workers are not alike. Finally, having a clue affects the technology parameter A, or sometimes in some representations in the textbook, the technology parameter is called E for uh, you know, the effectiveness of labor, but that's still a way of thinking about technology. So anyway, that's, those, are, those are the key takeaways, or that's the, that's the big picture of, 
of uh, how we're thinking about economic growth. There's a lot of other things to say. There, there are going to be takeaways added to this, but this is a good start. Thanks for listening and, and, and stay safe.